Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. I'm Data Engineer One, and on this channel, we're trying to help data engineers, data scientists, and data enthusiasts write better data pipelines. In today's episode, we're going to be covering decorators and how Kedro uses decorators to, what do you know, write better data pipelines. <laughs> okay, great. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is a decorator? Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you right now. A decorator is a special class of function in Python, really, that shows you, that allows you to modify the behavior of a function, an existing function, without modifying the code of that existing function. So I'm just going to make an example right here, and I'm going to show you what a decorator is. Now, when I say decorators are Python, um, a, a class of function in Python, what I mean is that that's how they're, they're referred to in Python, but actually this type of programming comes very much from functional programming, where everything is just a function on top of a function on top of a function, okay? Cool. So let's have, and let's just do this example decorator, right? And then we're going to have this guy sit here, and then we're going to have an example function. We're just going to call it fun, or let's call it example function. And what we're going to do inside of this example function is we're going to take a number and then we're just going to return that number plus one. So now when we call this, we're just going to make sure that we can call the function correctly and we're going to call example function with a number two. Um, and then we should be able to see that this number two is actually printed out as three. So if I do Python example, we can see the number three pops up, right? Okay, so what we have here, very simple Python file where we have a function that returns a number. Now, what if I want to modify the behavior of the input and output for this function? Clearly, I have to either modify something in here, right? So for example, if I want to add another one, I'd have to do something like this. And then this way we can return a four. Or I could do what we what we call uh, function wrapping here. So what we can do is instead of modifying the behavior of this function, I can create a new function that will then modify the behavior. So for example, this example decorator function, we're just going to say, okay, we're going to have, we're going to give it a number and then we're going to add one to that number. And then we're going to have the result come from this example function. And then we return the rec. And so this way, we can call example decorator as a function, which will take the number, then call this function and then return a new number. Obviously, this is going to return what number? Four again. Correct. Okay, great. So what did we do here? We modified the behavior of this function without modifying the function, right? Technically, we did give it a, basically, we're making a new function, um, wrapping this old function, and then returning a new result based on the new function plus the old result, correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, so this is this is basically the pattern that we're trying to go for. But obviously, this is very unwieldy, right? I might as well just be making new functions all the time, right? Um, if I wanted to change this behavior, for example, or if I had another set of functions, right? Example function um, two, for example, that I might want to try, right? So then I have this example decorator, and then I have to do this example function two into this example decorator two, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So you can see how suddenly this becomes very unwieldy. Rather, you can take advantage of the decorator syntax that Python supports. Right? Um, and in order to, to take advantage of that decorator syntax, you have to modify your function and your ideas around how functions work. So I, I say it a lot, um, but Kedro, basically, you can think of these nodes as pure functions. Um, where you take an input, it transforms that input, and then outputs, correct? What if instead of just taking functions, 
um, I'm sorry, it, instead of just having a pure function take an input and an output, what if you had a function that took another function as its input? Ah, now you're thinking with functions, right? So in this example, for example function and example function 2, we want to have the same behavior, but we don't want to make multiple of these extra functions, right? Instead, what we can do is we can take in one of the functions as the input and then return a new function with the behavior modified. And that new function will also take in a num and it will return this example function with the num called. I'm sorry, not example function, but rather the func that we've curried into this function. And then we return the modified behavior function. So now what happens here is that we're still calling this old function, but we can also modify the inputs as well as the outputs as we please. Correct? Yes, it is correct. So in this case, for this example decorator, instead of passing a 2, what we would do is we would pass in the example function as a parameter, new fun. And then with this new fun, we pass in the 2. And what's the answer going to be? You guessed it, 4. And that's because this example decorator is taking in this example function as a parameter value. That parameter value of function is being passed into a new function called modified behavior. And then this modified behavior function takes the number, modifies the number, and then calls that function argument, which again was this example function. And so that means that this num inside of here is going to get the num plus one, and then it's going to do another plus one here. And so obviously, instead of having to create all these new functions, we can just modify the behavior of these two. So new fun and then new fun two can have new fun and then new fun two. And what's new fun two and new fun going to output? You guessed it, four and four. And that's because this new fun two is not calling two, so you caught the error, of course. And when we call the new fun the, the example function two, it'll now output four and five, right? Because we're adding two in this version of the function, we're adding one in this version. So as you can see, a single wrapping function can modify as many functions as we need it to, uh, without having to change the behavior of the previous function. Now, obviously. Uh, this syntax is a little bit annoying, right? Nobody wants to have to call example decorator and then, you know, add a new function here, blah, 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 blah. Nobody wants that. Instead, what you can do is, is you can take advantage of Python's decorator syntax and use this at symbol, example decorator. So this at symbol here does exactly the same thing as creating this new function, except it's also renaming that example function. So it's overwriting the previous example function, creating a new example function with this determined behavior. Which means when we call this example function, right, this is the original example function, what's the output gonna be? That's right, the output is gonna be four and five once more. And just to prove that that's exactly what's happening, we can have here example function two, and this one is going to output 4 and 4, correct? Because we're adding the 1 using the decorator in the first function, and in the second function, we actually don't have a decorator. So we have here 4 and 4. As soon as we add this example decorator on top of the example function 2, we have 4 and a 5. So clearly, this, example, this, this decorator works. Highly recommend you go around and play with your decorators on your own. They're super duper valuable um, pieces of uh, Python syntax that you should know. Okay, great. So now what does this have to do with Ketro? Well, Ketro has built-in support for your decorators. In order to modify your node functions, there's a few ways, right? 
Um, so in this pipeline, I have this decorators pipeline. It's based off of the Iris dataset pipeline, the example pipeline. So you guys can take a look at it on your own, of course. Um, and in, inside here, let's say I want to modify the data engineering pipeline. And let's say I want to take this node here, this split data node, and I want to know how long does this node take. Obviously, before we learned about decorators, what you could do is you could just type in here, and then you have some like import time, and then the time, you know, get the time, and then you do like start time, and then you have something at the end where you have end time, and then you return you know, a log of that timing, right? So that's, of course, the naive way. Or, now that we know about decorator functions, we can instead decorate the split data function with, you know, like a logging with time, logging runtime function, which takes the function of split data, returns a new version of that function with time, passing in the arguments and quarks, okay? Uh, and now what we do is then we have, instead of writing it inside of the function directly, we use it outside. And so we have the import time, and then we have the start time, and then we have the end time, and then we can log, you know, we can do the log on the uh, start time, I'm sorry, the end time, minus the start time, and no, this log doesn't exist, I'm just making this up, this is only an example, and we return the return value. And that return value comes from the original function being called on the arbitrary arguments and quarks that are being passed in. And then we return this with time. And then, if we use logging runtime on top of this function, we've successfully modified the behavior of the split data function without changing the split data function code. And again, the reason why you don't want to necessarily change the function code is because if you're working with people, or if there's many people modifying, or you know, all sorts of things, you don't want to break any tests, then you don't want to necessarily modify the code. You would only want to change the behavior by adding new code. This is actually a principle of clean architecture. Um, but there's obviously a problem here. What's the problem? The problem is you have to add this at logging runtime to every single one of the nodes that you want to modify the behavior of. Except, of course, if you are using Ketro. So I have right here um, an example of uh, a log running time function. Uh, this is based off of a very similar to the um, example that actually is inside of the Ketro docs. So you can also take a look there. And what this does is exactly as we had earlier, it creates a logger, um, it gets the start time, it gets the end time, it finds the elapsed time, and then it logs to your log how long that particular function took to run. You can see right here, func.name. Uh, this is an introspective capability of Python, which allows you to get the actual name of the function that is being passed into this decorator function, right? And so how do we use this? In order to use this, what you do is you actually modify your pipeline code and you add a very simple line. And the line is right here. At the end of your pipeline class, you just do dot decorate. And this dot decorate, right, dot decorate will take whatever function you pass into it and it will decorate every single one of the node elements in your pipeline with that function. Meaning, this function will be called for every single node that you have in your pipeline. So let's take a look. When we do Kedro run, we should be able to see in the output the running time. Right? And let, just to make sure, let's take a look at that code. Running took x number of seconds. And so if we take a look at the pipeline here, very clearly, you can see running node predict, running predict took x number of seconds. 
running train model took 0 0.38 you know, seconds. Blah, 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 right? Very cool. Um, one of the coolest things here um, is also, let's see if we can run this one more time. If you notice here, what's actually really amazing uh, is that the train model decorator, um, I'm sorry, the, 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 the decorator on top of train model actually didn't modify the name of the function itself. Uh, that's actually, that's actually uh, very strange because I was expecting it to actually modify the, the name. Um, so it should have returned a with time. I'm not sure why it's not returning with time. Um, usually what happens is when you have these kinds of functions being wrapped, Kedra does some introspection uh, and then it takes the name of the function that you are returning as the function name itself. Uh, in, in this case though, it doesn't seem to be doing that, um, but in order to counteract that, when it does do that, you can use this wraps function. Uh, so what I'm saying here is uh, basically for this, for this running node um, piece of the logger, it takes this predict name uh, from the actual function name. So in our pipeline, that that particular node right there has the name from data science, which is under pipelines. Oh, I spelled deck wrong. It has the name under the data pipelines pipeline with predict, right? And so that actually comes directly from the function itself. Uh, so when you decorate a function, what normally happens is that function name will also be changed due to the way that Catcher does its introspection. Uh, however, in this case, it hasn't done that. Uh, but in the case that it does do that, you can use this library func tools, import wraps, and then you just use wraps as a decorator, and you call the function here. And so what happens here is that this indicates to Python itself that this function is just being wrapped by this function. So you keep the you keep all the introspective properties of the previous function available to the system, and that's how Kedro can pick it up. So if we even leave that here and we can rerun the pipeline, we'll still see the same result. Um, but this is basically in the case that you guys run into that issue. Great. Okay, well that just about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you guys learned something. And if you like this content, make sure to button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. Okay, take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.